In this video, I'll be going over my GMMK Pro build, sharing the components and building process, and hopefully providing some good reference for prospective owners. This build turned out really great in my opinion, and I'm eager to share the results. Let's get started. For this build, I'll be using the GMMK Pro with the $20 extra polycarbonate plate, Duroc V2 screw and stabilizers, and Gazoo Boba U4T switches. One of the most common questions slash complaints I've seen about the GMMK Pro plates are the compatibility with aftermarket stabs. We can easily confirm if the Duroc stabs will work by doing a test fitting with the stabilizer housing and the polycarb plate. While it does take a little bit of pressure and wiggling to get it to fit, it'll work just fine. There's a little bit of deformation of the plastic piece here, but as you can see, it doesn't interfere with the switch as that snaps in just fine. Fast forwarding a bit into the disassembly, I can also confirm that there are indeed fitment issues with the Duroc stabs and the stock aluminum plate. The stabilizer openings in the aluminum plate are too tight to fit the Duroc stabs without sanding the edges, which is a real shame. I hear the openings are even smaller on the brass plate, so I would avoid either of those if using aftermarket stabilizers. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Before disassembling the keyboard, I want to prepare the switches and stabilizers first. There's tons of videos out there on lubing switches, so I'll make this quick. We need to prepare 82 switches for the GMMK Pro. Use a switch opener or a flathead screwdriver to open each switch. Keep the four components separated as you work through the switches one by one. I kept the springs on their own individual paper plate since I'll be bag lubing them later. By the way, if you notice that gnarly scar on my right arm, I survived an encounter with a savage carnivorous wildcat but managed to escape with my life intact. So, to bag lube the springs, you just need a small Ziploc bag. Put the springs in there, and put in a few drops of your favorite lube. I'm just using Super Lube oil because it's cheap and it works great. Close up the bag and shake it until the lube is evenly spread. If you have a lube station, it can help make the lubing go along faster. Mine lets me do 30 switches at a time, so let's just get the bottom housings placed in there. Now for lubing. Everyone has their own preference. When I first started my mechanical keyboard hobby last summer, Crytox and Tribosis were never in stock. I got by with making my own lube by mixing Super Lube PTFE oil and PTFE grease. It's nice because they're like $4 each for huge tubes that last forever, and depending on the grease to oil mixture, can result in a mixture that's either quite thin or thick. For these Boba U4Ts, I'll make a thinner mix since they already perform really great stock, and we just want to give them that little bit of extra refinement. I'm sure that Crytox and Tribosis would work just as well, if not better, but I've been using this lube mixture for about 10 builds and I haven't felt the need to pick up any other lube, so feel free to use that personal testimony however you'd like. For the Boba U4Ts, I'll just lube the sliders on the bottom housing and around the bottom post. It's pretty difficult doing it through the viewfinder, so I'll finish the rest off camera. Once the bottom housings are fully lubed, we can place the bag lube springs back. They may get tangled up with each other, but it's easy to separate them with a couple of tweezers. Then, put the stems on the springs. Usually, you should use a picker to place them since you'd lube the stems as well, but I'm leaving the stems unlubed on these U4Ts to preserve the tactility, so I'm just going to be a savage and use my bare hands. When closing the switch up, be sure that the stem legs are facing the metal leaf, and that the taller side of the top housing is over the metal leaf side of the bottom housing before snapping it shut. Once all 82 switches are done, my next step is preparing the stabilizers. You'll need a 6.25U spacebar wire and three 2U wires for the GMMK Pro. With the Duroc V2 stabs, the stabilizer stems are already flat at the bottom, so there's no need to clip anything. I'll also be doing the Holy mod, which places thin strips of band-aid into the stabilizer stems to cushion the impact from the wires. This really helps to eliminate rattle and get that consistency across the stabilized keys. We'll start off by cutting a really thin strip of band-aid fitted to the inside of the stabilizer stem. Using tweezers and very focused hand-eye coordination, we can peel the backing off partially to expose the sticky side. Carefully thread it into the stabilizer stem from the front side with the two holes, and line it up with the edge of the back opening. Once it's lined up, we can push it down firmly with the tweezers to get it to fully adhere. We'll pull off the remainder of the sticker backing and cut the strip down a little. Then we can stuff the extra into the top hole on the front of the stabilizer stem to provide some additional anchoring. Here's a still of the completed holy mod for reference, so pause it here if you need some time to digest. We'll need to do this another 7 times for the remainder of the stabilizer stems. With the holy mod finished, we can now balance the wires. Use a flat surface like the back of an old smartphone and just check to see if either side of the wire is lifted up a little. If it is, you can bend it over the edge of the phone or use syringes for some additional leverage. These Duroc wires are already really straight stock, so I only had to tune the spacebar wire a bit. 
Remember to keep them the same side up when reassembling the stabs. Next, we can lube the inside of the stabilizer housings with our Super Lube Mix, as well as the outsides of the stabilizer stems. I use an interdental brush to apply some Permatex dielectric grease on the hooks where the wire snaps in. I also lightly lube the ends of the wire with the Super Lube Mix in order to help it get into the stem, but be careful not to over lube here as it could get absorbed by the band-aid over time and cause it to unstick. Repeat three more times for the remaining stabilizers. Reassemble the stabilizers by placing the stems into the housings and then inserting the wire ends and snapping them in place one by one. Phew, five and a half minutes in and we're finally ready to disassemble the GMMK Pro. It's not too tough, but there are several different variants of screws. So I prepared some labels to keep track of everything. We can keep the screws separated into case screws, plate screws, diffuser screws, and the standoff screws. First, let's remove the 8K screws keeping the top and bottom together. In order to lift off the top, we'll need to remove the rotary knob simply by pulling it off. The top will then come off no problem. In order to separate the plate and PCB, we will need to first unplug the daughter board connector. Next, let's separate the plate, diffusers, and PCB. Since there's a protruding rotary knob pull, be sure to offset the plate a little when placing it back down. Let's remove the diffuser screws, but oof, the diffusers themselves don't come out until the plate is off. So let's remove those 8 screws as well. We'll also need to flip everything over to remove the standoff screws. Remember to keep everything organized since these screws are all different lengths. The plate foam is held on by a small piece of adhesive, so just pull it off carefully. Now let's remove the so-called GOAT stabs, since we'll be replacing them with our modded Duroc stabs. One nice thing about the GMMK Pro PCB is that it indicates with a white circle where the screw and stabs go, so there's no confusion in the orientation. With the stock stabs out, I put down some athletic tape to band-aid mod the space and backspace. This just dampens the bottom out a little, and you can choose to skip this if you like. Let's get the rest of the Duroc stabs in, being sure to place the little paper washer between the screw and PCB as well. At this point, I also put on some keycaps to test the stabilizers and make sure they're not rattling. You definitely want to do this before reassembling everything to save yourself some headache if the stabs need additional tuning. Now let's get the polycarb plate put on. I'll be reusing the plate foam, so just line it up and then put the polycarb plate over it. We will need to use a little pressure to get all the Duroc stabs pushed through the plate openings. Check around the perimeter of the plate to ensure everything is tight and aligned. The polycarb plate also comes with its own self-tapping screws, which we'll need to use as it doesn't come pre-threaded. Do not reuse the screws for the aluminum plate. Also, my wow stick didn't have enough torque to screw these in, so we'll need to bust out the old manual muscle here. I used all 8 plate screws and reused the standoffs since a stiffer plate works well with tactile switches. But you can leave out the standoffs and use fewer plate screws, or even only the diffuser screws if you want a softer plate. Now let's reconnect the daughter board. Make sure to stuff the cable into its channel before closing up the case and re-tightening the case screws. For a final touch, I also picked up the gold knob, so let's swap that out too. With the body reassembled, let's get our boba switches and carefully place them into the hot swap sockets. These are south facing sockets, so make sure you align the switches correctly. Check to make sure the pins are straight, then insert the switch into the socket while pressing down and wiggling a little to snap it in place. If you encounter some resistance, check the switch for bent pins. You can usually fix them by straightening them out with a pair of tweezers. With all 82 switches in, our final step is to put on our keycaps. For this build, I chose some GM fake Olivia keycaps, which were readily in stock on Amazon. These are pretty convincing imitation Olivia keycaps and feature a cherry profile and double shot PBT construction. They're pretty high quality, all things considered, and they're a great match for the build in terms of the premium feel and sound I'm pursuing, while being in stock and actually purchasable outside of the secondhand market, where a genuine set may sell for hundreds of dollars. Knockoff keycaps are always going to be a point of contention, so my advice is just to go with whatever your own preference is. For the spacebar, I also used some GMK spacebar foam from Stupid Fish Designs to soften the sound. And now, let's get a short montage of the finished build. So it definitely looks great, but how does it sound?
Altogether, I had a good time building in the GMMK Pro, and I'm really happy with the way that the build turned out. I think that for $350, this build really does compare favorably with other builds in the same budget. If you wanted to save some more money, I think that tuning the GOAT stabilizers with the Holy Mod, using the stock aluminum plate, using some less expensive keycaps without the spacebar foam, and skipping the custom knob would have a similar result while saving you around $70, and that build would definitely be punching above its weight class. Anyways, that's all for this video. Feel free to leave any questions or feedback in the comments section. Hit the like and subscribe buttons, and I'll see you all in the next video.